solve the inequality 2x divided by x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 1. Now, uh, I just want to say, before we solve this one, I just want to say that, you know, solving rational inequalities is a very different from solving rational equations. So don't ever think that these are, you know, I mean, I mean the, the techniques that we used um, in solving rational equations can be used also um, in solving inequalities. They are very different, okay? And in fact, solving inequalities involves many steps and it can be, it can be confusing at first. So that I just want to say. All right. So in solving rational inequalities, you first have to make sure that your right-hand side, the right-hand side of the inequality, this one, is zero. Okay? So you have to make sure that that is zero. That's, that's the first step, right? If that is not zero, then all you need to do is to um, subtract, okay? subtract that value to both sides of the equation, right? So if you have one in there, you can subtract one. So that's minus one on the right side. And you can also do that on the left side, right? Subtract one. And, and just to note, right? You, you don't subtract one um, in, the denom uh, in the numerator or the denominator. You subtract one to the entire, uh, the entire term, right? So let me, let me just write that down for the claro, right? So that's 2x divided by x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 1, right? So again, you have to make sure that this is 0, right? If that's not 0, you, you subtract by that amount, so minus 1, and also minus 1 on the left side, okay? So that will give you, that will give you 2x divided by x plus 1 minus 1 is greater than or equal to zero, right? So you, all, you, you uh, already have a zero on the right side. That's what we want. Okay, and the next is you want to write the left side as a single fraction or a single term, right? So as of the moment, you have two terms, this term and that term right there. So you want to write that as just one term, right? Okay, so how do you, how do you um, rewrite? this term, uh, I mean the, the left-hand side, as just a single term, right? So remember, our first term is 2x divided by x plus 1. Our second term is minus 1, right? Now, we want that our second term will have the same denominator as the first term. So as of now, as of for the moment, no denominator, right? So we want them to have the same denominator. So we're going to add that same denominator x plus 1. But then again, if you put a factor in the denominator and you want to maintain uh, the value of, uh, of, of the term, right? So whatever you put in the denominator, you also put that in the numerator, right? So if you put x plus 1 in the denominator, you put x plus 1 in the numerator because that will basically just cancel out, right? So if we, if we do, if we redo or if we reverse the process, right? So if we can just cancel out x plus 1, and then we're left with, with 1. Same thing. Okay. And then that is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so now our terms have the same denominators. We can now write it as a single fraction, right? Where x plus 1 is your common denominator. Okay, then your, your numerator for the first term is 2x. Your numerator for your second term is what? Minus x plus 1, right? So minus, oops, minus x, oops, minus x plus 1. Now, it's very important that you put parentheses because that will matter later on, okay? So that's minus x plus 1 is greater than equal to 0. Then you simplify. So you get 2x minus, again, the reason why we put parentheses is because we still have to distribute the negative sign to both terms. So that's minus x, oops, let me use the same color, minus x minus 1 divided by x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. Then you can simplify further. So that's 2x minus x is x minus 1 over x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. And you cannot... Simplify this one further. 
So this will be your this will be the inequality that we'll be considering for our next step. Okay. So we'll consider this one for our next step. Okay, so we're done with the first step. The second step is to find the critical values. Okay. Now how do you find the critical values? Well, you simply have to equate the factors in your numerator to zero and also the factors of your denominator to zero. Okay. Now in this case, my numerator only have one factor and that's x minus one, right? So I will equ equate x minus one, x minus one to zero and then find the solution, right? That's x equals one. This will be my first critical value. Okay. So this is a critical value. Now, I also have to equate the factors of my denominator to zero. Now, in this case, my denominator only has one factor, which is x plus one. So I will equate that to zero. So that's x plus one equals zero. And that gives me x equals negative one. This is my second critical value. Now, there is actually no limit to how many critical values uh, an inequality may have. Uh, it, it really depends on how many factors are there in your numerator and denominator. So there's no limit. So in this case, you have two critical values, negative one and positive one. So it's time to create our number line. Okay, so let's create a number line. So the purpose of the number line is to test um, points in our number line. So you locate zero, right? So you, you'll be guided where zero is, the origin, right? So say this is zero. Uh, and then you locate your critical values, right? So the first critical value is one. So let's say one is here. And the other critical value is negative one. Say that's there, me. Okay? So you have negative one, zero, and one. So this is your number line that extends to infinity. Okay, now how do you test the how do you use these critical values to test um, for solution, to find for the solutions? Okay, now, um, unlike equations, right? Equations have unique or two solutions or three solutions, depends on the degree of the equation. But uh, for inequalities, you actually have infinitely many solutions, right? So it could be that, it could be that this um, interval right here this could be your solution. This, the, all numbers that are here could satisfy your inequality. Or it could be that all the numbers from negative one to negative infinity satisfy this um, inequality. Or it could be that the numbers from one to you know, uh, positive infinity could satisfy the solution. So there are actually many solutions to, um, to an inequality, right? So, so let's test now, how many regions do we have? How many sort of intervals do we have? So our first interval is from negative one down to negative infinity. Our second interval is from negative one to one. And our third interval is from one to positive infinity. So we will test which of these intervals are the solutions, okay? So how do you do that? You pick a value, say you want to know if you want to know if this is a solution right here. Okay. So to do that, you pick a value somewhere uh, in that interval, right? So I could pick negative two, right? Because negative two is within that interval. So let's test x equals negative two. Now, if I substitute, if I substitute negative two to this inequality that we got uh, from the previous step, and I get a correct statement, then that means this portion, this interval is a solution, okay, right? So let's test if negative two gives you a correct statement, right? So let's substitute negative two for x. Let's do that here. Let's do that here, right? So instead of writing x, we'll write negative two minus one. Again, I'm, I'm using this inequality here. Okay, so negative two minus one divided by negative two plus one is greater than or equal to zero. Now, if this, if this is correct, then 
then this part is a solution. Okay, let's let's see. Negative two minus one is negative three divided by negative two plus one is negative one is greater than or equal to zero. Let's simplify. That's three is greater than or equal to zero. Now the question is: Is this true? Is this correct? Well, yes, right? Three is greater than or equal to zero, and so therefore this part right here is indeed is indeed a solution right so this part is a solution that extends to that extends to infinity so that's a solution now we still don't know if negative one is part of the solution so let, let's let's put a hollow circle in there we still don't know okay so how do we know if negative one is part of the solution well let's substitute negative one right so if you substitute negative one here you'll get Let's do that. So if I substitute negative 1, I will basically get negative 1 minus 1 divided by negative 1 plus 0 is greater than or equal to 0. Uh, I'm sorry, plus, plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. Um, so we have minus 2 divided by what? Divided by 0. And that is wrong, right? Because this is undefined, right? That's undefined. So therefore, negative 1 is not part of the solution. So you leave that as a hollow circle that means that number that value isn't part of the solution okay now the next interval that we want to test is the interval from negative one to one right so this interval right here this one so we want to test so how do you test you just pick a number from that interval in this case i'll use zero i'll have i'll have so zero zero for x at minus one divided by zero plus one is greater than or equal to zero. That gives me negative one divided by one is greater than or equal to zero. That gives me negative one is greater than or equal to zero. Is this true? Is this correct? The answer is no, right? Negative one is less than zero. And that means that this interval, this interval is not a solution, right? So we'll not, we'll not shade this interval. This is not a solution. Now, the next thing that we want to know is if 1 is a solution, right? The critical value 1. We want to know if this is a solution, right? So, how do we do that? Well, you just substitute 1 to this um, inequality, okay? So, you'll have 1 minus 1 divided by 1 plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. That gives you 0 over 2 greater than or equal to 0 that gives me zero is greater than or equal to zero. Is that a correct statement? Yes, right? Zero is greater than or equal to zero, right? Zero is equal to zero. So this is a correct statement. And so that means that one is a solution. And so we need to cover the whole, right? So that means one is part of the solution. Now, the next thing that we want to know if is this thing right here up to infinity if that is also a solution how do we test again the same step you pick any value within that interval so i'm going to use two okay that's the simplest choice so i'll use two so two minus one two minus one divided by two plus one is greater than or equal to zero that gives me one divided by three is greater than or equal to zero now is this true right is that correct is one third greater than or equal to zero yes of course right one third is greater than zero so therefore this is also a solution to our inequality and so to summarize these solutions okay we say that the solutions are Now, there are many ways to write a set, right? Basically, you're writing a set. I'm writing an interval, right? So I'm saying that from negative, to, uh, from negative infinity to negative one open, that means when you use this sort of parenthesis, that means open, that means negative one is not part of the set, right? Um, otherwise, if, if negative one is part of the solution, you write a closed bracket. Okay, square bracket, right? So, but this is not part, that's hollow. So that's just a parenthesis. 
and then union union because you also have another set right here um, union from one from one up to infinity but this is sorry but this is closed right here right because one is part of the solution so that's closed now for infinities you, al you always use parentheses you don't use close brackets for infinities okay so this is your final solution this is your solution set 